All right. Well, again, welcome everybody. Um, I hope you're having a great morning so far. Uh, this month's uh, coaching session is regarding payments and uh, pay requests and anything related to that, such as electronic payments, how to sign up for that, um, and then also where to find your payments once it's been made. All righty. And so today we're going to start out, um, again, sorry, I'm Amber Westbrook with the South Carolina Arts Commission of the Grants. Um, we have Kathy Lee with us today, uh, Grants Manager, and she will be uh, taking over the first part of our presentation today. So I will uh, hand it over to you, Kathy, and I will go ahead and start screen sharing. Okay. Are you going to bring up a payment request? Well, yes. Let's, let's show them where to go to the payment request. Um, but as we're moving to the, going in and i um, going to show you where the payment request is, I want to give a brief overview of um, the types of payments that we have. Um, so we have a couple of, of different types um, of payments within our um, grant programs. We have one that's um, called the interim payments where you can request payments throughout your grant period. These are typical of like the operating support grants and some of the larger project grants that um, we give out. Uh, most of our um, payments are on a reimbursement basis, meaning that you've got to cover the expenses up front and then you submit after your project or after you've expended um, the funds and then you can put in and request for a payment which is a reimbursement for those um, expenses. Um, so we have the interim. Um, then we have the payments at the final report, um, which again is another reimbursement grant I mean, payment, and it is where you've completed the project, you submit your final report, and um, upon receipt and acceptance of that final report, then we go ahead and issue that payment to you. Uh, we do have a few um, grant categories that where some of the funding is. Um, issued up front at the sign of the contract with a portion of that then being um, at final report. Um, so those are the types of grants that we, I mean, of um, payments that we have um, and the, the payout types. So with that in mind, we're gonna go over um, the payment, interim payment requests. What do you have? Let me see what you have up on the board. Come on. Okay. Sorry, I just have um, at the beginning here in this no, guide yeah, that's, is uh, just where it's located in the contract um, before entering. Yes. No, this is good. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Amber? Sure. <laughs> um, so within the uh, grant contract that is available for you, of course, to review and download on your applicant dashboard, um, within this section where you'll see your name, um, the authorized official for your organization. Obviously, uh, you should see your contact. Um, here, we have the grant award, your required match, and then the total minimum project expenses. Um, so that is uh, what you will need at least to receive your full grant award um, to report in expenses. Now, we understand um, within the first uh, pay request, you may not have um, all of your expenses, but if you do and you surpass those minimum project expenses, please report that still. Um, so we do want to see, again, all of your expenses, not just the total minimum, but this is what is required of you to receive your full grant award. Um, and then, of course, you'll have uh, further details, uh, dates underneath. So sorry, here's where we get actually into the form, Kathy. Um, okay. So and the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, just in regards, I don't have a sample of where to find that on your applicant dashboard. It will be right underneath where your um, where you completed your grant contract packet. Um, that's where all of your follow-ups live. So you'll access those and complete those in the same location. Sorry. 
No, please go ahead, Kathy. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you, Amber. Um, so on your pay request form, there are um, several sections. The first section is some information about your grant. This is a read only section um, and it'll tell you the grant number that we've assigned, which is also located on your contract, the name of your project, the amount that was awarded, um, some all that information that Amber showed that was highlighted up above that's part of your contract also appears in here in this first section to kind of like help you um, figure out exactly if you're going to be able to meet and get your full award on this payment or whether or not you're going to be submitting um, subsequent interim payments. So the next section is our cash expenses section. And in this section, you're gonna give us the period that you're doing your expenses from. So if you were to submit a payment today, then you would want to start with the beginning of the grant period, which for operating support applicants is July 1st. And this is really, this payment request is mainly for our operating support grantees and then also some of those large projects because this is an interim payment. This is not a final report payment because um, you're not doing a payment request if your project is in reimbursed at final report. So, and then, so you want to put the starting date. So for your first payment request, that's going to be on July 1 to whatever date you're submitting it or whatever date your budget figures are going through. So if you're going through August, you're gonna do July and August, or if you're doing the September 2nd, cause today's the day you're putting it in, that's fine. If the figures only are going till August 30th or 31st, but you're submitting it today, then just put August 31st. So you want that to reflect the figures that you're entering in, okay? It, subsequent interim payment requests, you would start with for your um, expense period from date, you would wanna start, so let's say my first interim payment went through August 31st. So then my next payment, I'm gonna start on September 1st, through whatever I wanna go through. Let's say I'm going through December and I'm submitting it in, in December 31st or January 1st. So you can't submit this and say, oh, my expenses are going to be through December 31st, but I'm submitting it on September 1st. So it has to be um, the period that has passed, not a future period, okay? So that is the um, time period. And so in the payment request, the cash expense items are salaries, professional fees, occupancy, um, rent utilities and maintenance, marketing, which includes printing, publications, postage, mailing, advertising and promotions, travel and other. Um, so in salaries, you're going to include salary benefits and any other compensation that you give to any administrative staff, artistic staff that you have on payroll, clerical or technical. So that's salaries or payroll. If you're contracting with artists, then that's going to go under your professional fees. So that's where you include anything with contractors, artists, um, outside artistic fees, any licenses and so forth. And then under occupancy is where you put your rent, utilities, maintenance, all of that. Um, and then of course, marketing, travel and other. So if there's an expense that doesn't fit in any of those categories, say like supplies, then you could put that in other and you can describe that expense. You don't really need to go into detail that these are all the different supplies that I bought, but just say supplies for this period, 
blank, you know, supplies, and then the amount that you were including in that total that was for that supply. And so this is what the form looks like. Once you filled all that in, unfortunately, we're not able to total this for you. I wish that we could. So we need you to total all of those figures that you included in this cash expense item that you're submitting for this payment request and put that right there where um, Amber has it circled. And once you've done all that, all you have to do is certify that your figures are true to the best of your knowledge and then submit the follow-up. And once you've submitted, Amber, what's next? Sorry. So yes, um, uh, our payment process, um, you'll see us mention this and, and hear us say this all the time, but the payment process can take up to four to six weeks. Um, we try to expedite that as much as we can, but again, um, it's kind of out of our hands when it does leave um, our office. Um, one thing, let me see if I can stop share for just a moment here. Um, once you have submitted your pay request, um, we take the time to review it, make sure everything does make sense. If there are any uh, pieces that are missing or the calculations are not um, uh, totaling properly, we will reach back out to you. Um, if there is something that uh, we see regarding the date, like say all of a sudden you've done for the full year of your contract. So for operating support, you've done from July 1st to June 30th of the following year. Mm, we're like, oh no, we need you um, to fix those things. We will revert it back to you and send you an email notification stating we need you to make any of those changes and you can resubmit. Um, once uh, we are uh, able to review it and approve it, um, we do begin that process of um, getting a payment approval, and then we go ahead and uh, put that into motion. So there is a way uh, you can check that in your system. Um, again, I'm just going to go through um, just a quick PDF share here. Just a moment. And Amber, while you're saying that, I, I just want to reiterate that this is for the interim payment request. Um, if you're a project and you're just submitting a final report, you do not need to do anything additional. That payment request that we in issue internally to start that process is automatic upon um, receiving and approving that final report that you submit. Thank you, Kathy, because um, we do get questions from time to time if there's anything else I need to do, and if there's nothing <laughs> that you need to do at that time, and we are just working behind the scenes to um, make that payment happen. Um, so again, this is a, a good visual of the applicant dashboard. Again, contract packet you'll see here, and then your pay request um, here. So a uh, good thing to do if you're in your active request and you just want to click on your um, any of your follow-ups really uh, to get into uh, the next uh, section into that process. So uh, once that follow-up form, whichever one you choose, um, pops open. You'll have those uh, four tabs at the top, uh, contact info request, award details, documents. So you want to make sure you click on the awards details tab. Um, and so what you're going to see in this next section. Um, so this is going to show you the installment total. This is the total grant amount that you were awarded. You'll have a canceled total. Most likely you will not have any amount within that. Um, again, this is if a, a amount was canceled uh, from your award, that amount would be reflected there. Um, but the, the amount paid, um, this is the grant amount that has been paid so far. Um, and then of course, any balance uh, remaining, uh, pretty self-explanatory, the remaining balance of your grant award to be paid. Um, now to see the amount paid um, and how many payments that is, typically it, it may just be one or two. Um, you want to click installment form to open that section. Um, once that section opens, let's see if I can, there we go. Um, you'll find the number of payments. So again, we only have one here. Um, you'll have the amount paid. Uh, and then the balance will also show here, just like in this section, we'll have it up here. 
Um, within this payment date and amount, this showcases information on that one payment that has occurred. Um, the payment date, this is a very crucial part. Um, we'll say four to six, up to four to six weeks for the payment process. Um, this uh, is the date that starts from. So it's four to six dates from this payment date you see here. Um, as to not get confused with this installment due date, this is more of an internal deadline for us as to when we need to make sure um, your grant award is paid out and that's internal. Um, there's no way for us to kind of like take that away. Um, unfortunately, you get to see it too, but I just don't want to cause any confusion there. So this payment date here of what says 9-8-2020. Um, and then of course, you'll also see your installment amount, which again is your total grant award for this section. So it's a lot of information. So key thing about this section is seeing how much your first amount is, and then this payment date right here. All right. So I have for this um, particular and finding your grant payment. I'm going to go ahead and stop that real quickly. Um, we do get a lot of questions about how to apply or how to apply for electronic payment. Um, electronic payment is a faster process, I will say, than check. Um, it also, uh, again, uh, limits that possibility of a check getting lost um, and also prolonging that payment process for you. Because again, um, uh, there are some things, you know, with the Postal Service that, again, are out of our, out of our hands and out of your hands um, for a potential loss payment or going to the uh, inappropriate um, uh, address, which also brings up um, how important it is to update us if your organization has had a um, address change. Um, the W-9 that you provide us, um, the checks are mailed to that particular address on the W-9. We are not able to change it. If you have like, say there's like, oh, we get mail in a certain section, but it's not the physical address that we have with the IRS. Um, unfortunately, we can't make that change. So they automatically will pull from the one that's on your W-9. So it's even more of an incentive to go ahead and um, sign up for that electronic payment with the treasurer's office. So I wanna show you, let me fast here. Um, how to access more of that information. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, sorry, we're on this over here. Okay, one section that we do have, so each of you, um, our grantees, you'll get some kind of grant award notification, um, and you would also get uh, possibly just a contract available uh, email communication. Um, we send those out, of course, from the grants portal. Each one of those you'll see has some instructions here uh, to complete your contract packet. But then on the on below those instructions, you'll see signing up for electronic payment, direct deposit through the South Carolina State Treasurer's Office. This contains the link that you need. Um, you'll click on that. It'll take you straight to their website. So you can go ahead and um, fill out the forms that are needed there. Um, again, we are not able to process their forms. You'll have to use the contact information that is within those forms. Um, go ahead. Okay. Um, you'll also see within those instructions a link to take you to our grant management instructions. Um, if you're ever uh, confused about like, oh gosh, how do I get here? If you just go to our main page and you're like, oh no, where do I go? You can go ahead, just click on grants. And on this side blue bar over here, always there's grant management instructions. Um, this will help guide you through that process from start to finish. Um, and again, we have the pay request section. This kind of goes back into detail what we um, elaborated a little bit more for you today. Um, your first pay request, uh, you know, if you have interim payments, if you do not, then it's like, okay, all at final report. Um, again, using a fiscal receiver, uh, be aware that grant funds will be released to your fiscal receiver who will then pay you, because this is really important to note as well. And then electronic payment direct deposit. So we're gonna go ahead and click over. So that link will take you to their website. 
Here you'll get, you'll see the electronic vendor payment information leaflet. This is important for you to download and read. Um, it just gives you up to date um, on their process and how long that process might take. And then this electronic vendor payment enrollment form, click to download that. That is a form you will be completing and emailing or mailing or faxing um, over to their office, which I'm not sure if they are receiving fax anymore, but again, the information on that form is most up to date. Um, and we please do not email those to us. We don't have any way to get it uh, to them. Make sure that you work with them completely through this process and also check on your status uh, with their contacts that are on that form. Okay. And then again, we have our turnaround time here again, four to six weeks, just as a, a reminder. Um, important to note here, um, uh, with the grants team, we have only so much information um, on our end uh, that we can share with you, which is about uh, obviously when the payment was a uh, first uh, placed um, into process. But then when it is past that point and it may be lost, needs to be reissued, or you need to know which, um, whether it's state or federal funding it comes from, um, anything uh, like that, you can contact our finance department, accounting at arts.se.gov, uh, um, if you have any further questions about things like that. Um, that's just the fastest way to get information um, versus you sending it to us and then we, <laughs> we shoot it over to them, um, but we'll always uh, help you as best we can uh, with that. Um, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and sorry, stop share. So there's not so much words in your face at this time. Um, a new policy we have for those who are receiving arts education projects. And then, of course, this also has been the same thing for our ABC advancement grantees. Um, if you need a pay request, please email us. You can also call us and leave a voicemail um, just to let us know that you're ready for um, a payment request. Um, unfortunately, uh, it is, uh, we're not able to issue those right after uh, the initial contract packet. Um, due to uh, the final reports. Um, some are earlier, some are later than others, um, and we would hate for that payment request to interfere with you completing your final report, because unfortunately in the system, um, it will make you fill out one of those first. <laughs> and um, it's just the easiest way to make sure that you get payment when you need it. And then if it's that final report, we're able to issue it final report. Now for our operating support grantees, you do not have to worry about that. After we have processed your contract packet, we do put your payment request up there um, right away. Uh, and we do apologize for some of the delay uh, that has happened this year, but we are working through them. Um, some of you, you have had those already, pay requests are available. And again, when we do make a pay request available to you through the grants portal, you receive an email notification stating that it is ready for you uh, to submit when you are ready to do so. Um, and if you have any questions about that. Um, I guess we can also say um, for operating support grantees, again, we have um, that pay that first pay request, uh, we automatically have uh, due December 1st against a soft deadline. Um, it will send you uh, an alert stating like it's due in 30 days or it's past due. That's okay. The next email you have uh, that kind of tells you it's past due, uh, you can submit it at that time or you can just get with us and we can extend it for you. That's totally fine. Um, we try to make it uh, to best fit your needs. <laughs> it just seems uh, it's been beneficial for our grantees to have at least that alert um, in December for, hey, pay requests if you haven't submitted one thus far. All righty. And all right, I'm gonna, uh, now's a good time to um, have any questions uh, or uh, our question and answer section. Does anyone have any questions about our pay requests? Good morning. Good this morning. is Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, <laughs> you, in the past, there's been a holdback on um, the payout. Is that going to occur this year as well? It will not. Um, no. We are able to um, uh, pay those out in full uh, this year if you have reported the appropriate expenses. 
Second question. Um, with electronic signatures these days, you have different people filling who are actually compiling everything and um, versus that person who's responsible for the whole agency. Uh, is it a problem? And I'll, I'll give you my example. Uh, Tim is the, is the executive director. I do a lot of the, the work on my computer. I can send it in, but it will come under my name. Um, or I can go to the main office, put it on Tim's computer and send it in. So which, which is or doesn't it matter? So Mike, if, if your executive director has authorized you to submit that payment, that's kind of part of that language of that certification that you've been authorized, okay. then you can go ahead and submit that. So you're agreeing that you're either the authorized official or you've re received authorization to, yeah. to submit. It's, and it's going into his bank account, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions at this time? Again, if you do have any questions that come up after this, uh, please email us, uh, grants at arts.sc.gov. Um, and then of course, uh, you can always call us 803-734-8695 uh, um, to assist. And we are um, so grateful for everyone's participation uh, through these tutorials. Um, and we are, uh, we just appreciate you all so much um, and all the wonderful work that you do. So it's, uh, we're just grateful to be able to offer this assistance um, to you all uh, just kind of run through, um, I know as much information as we can in a short time period, but we do try our best to break down um, items. Uh, we'd love to get feedback from you as well if there is a topic um, that you would like us to elaborate a little bit further on um, within the granting process, uh, we're happy to do that. Um, you can always just uh, communicate with us and let us know. Um, so, so Amber, we wanna let them know that in October on the first Thursday, we're gonna talk about um, applications um, because we kind of are going into the application season, even though um, the operating support group one grantees um, should have already submitted their application. Um, but for most of our grant programs, the fall to winter kind of starts that application process. So we're just going to have a general call coaching session about applications and general content and budgets for applications. Um, so we hope you will be able to join us then. Um, we do have a few more coming down the line uh, for November. We have diversity, equity, access and inclusion workshop training. Um, again, we have another one in December and this is uh, treated more as an open call for anyone who has started applications or in the thick of it, um, have any questions pertaining to any uh, parts of applications. We're happy to answer that at that time as well. Uh, January, we'll talk a little more about the panel process. Um, and then February, uh, reaching out to the General Assembly and best practices to do that. Um, and again, if anyone uh, needs a refresher, our monthly topics, you can register here for those who have not done so already. And then of course, we have our one-on-one -on -one calls um, where you can schedule a meeting with us if you do need that uh, Zoom, anything that doesn't uh, happen over email or phone. There's a, a couple other ones on there. So when we do oh, open sure. up an application process, we generally have shortly or right around that time that that application process opens for that program, we generally have an open call um, where we go kind of go over the content of what's expected in that application. Um, and so you'll see those there. Um, some of them have been scheduled. Most of these right now that are current are that op currently opened are, are artist project grants or artist applicable grant programs. Um, but we'll be populating this list as we go through and update guidelines and get them posted and schedule 
um, more of those open calls during, right at the application process. And also, um, we, you can always go back. This is why we record these videos so that you can always go back and view it again. Or if you've missed one, you, there's a link on that page under that um, session that contains the video and you can watch that at any time. which we know that's been very helpful. And we're really glad to hear that that's um, helpful to our grantees. Any questions? All righty. Well, on that note, I'm just gonna say thank you all so much for participating today. We really appreciate you. Um, and uh, please just let us know if we can help you at any time. We'll always hear for you. Um, and thank you so much. We hope you have a great rest of your week.